Mary Hole. We're gardening from Richmond, Vermont. Uh, let's get started. Today we're going to talk about saving seeds. Why do you save seeds? You save seeds because it's a thrifty thing to do. Uh, it's easy to collect them and the seeds can be from your own garden so that what is growing this year you can propagate for next year. And uh, one of the first things that's important to know is you may collect them in plastic, but do not store them in plastic because they will be subject to mold and rot. When do you start picking the seeds for saving? Well, you do that when they're past bloom. This is an example of a black-eyed Susan. And uh, just, I think there's only a couple of the petals left on there. This is of course what they look like when they're in full bloom. When the seed head starts to dry, you tap it and it'll start emitting the seeds. This isn't quite dry enough, but it'll still give you some seeds and give you an idea of how to do it. So you can either move it around in your hand, um, pinch it back, or just let it fall on its own. The drier it is, the easier it is to get the seeds out. This is an anise, and this has a mild licorice aroma, um, and this has already started dropping the seeds. They're little tiny things, but you only have to uh, move your hand, fingers up and down the stem, and it'll emit the seeds. This square stem is quite unique. It's in the nettle family, um, and the anise flavor, if you're doing any kind of a, a barbecue or shish kebab, you can put your meat or your vegetables on this stem, and a little of that flavor will come through when you put it on the grill. So that's the anise. And then we move into yarrow. Yarrow is um, typically a white flower. And this set has already gone to seed, so it's very easy just to scrunch the head and all those yarrow seeds come out. This yarrow is pretty much dry, ready for um, putting into a paper bag and storing. So that's the yarrow, very easy to harvest. This is a lily. It's very common for folks to have day lilies or standard lilies. This was a purple lily uh, growing here on the town center lawn. And at this point, you should be able to break open the seed pod and out come the seeds. Pretty easy to get those. This, uh, this seed pod dried, I think we were done blooming with this one at the end of May, but it did no harm to the plant and you can see that it didn't send out the seeds or break the pod apart before I picked them this morning. Uh, another thing that I save, these are chives, chive seeds. These are all the flower heads that I picked um, a few weeks ago. They come from a chive plant, which I'm sure everyone's familiar with. It's in the onion family. And you'll have these wonderful black seeds that you can plant. So these wonderful black seeds, you can just scatter about. And as somebody mows the lawn or as you start clipping things, you'll get this aromatics of uh, onion. Now, once you've got the seeds picked, You've gone out to the garden, you've clipped them, you brought them in, you let them kind of sit on a flat surface like this to collect. Uh, have something underneath so that you can gather everything up because they will fly all about. Um, storage, when fully dry, then you want to pick up something like this, uh, a paper sack. And why are you gonna use a paper sack? Because the paper sack will not hold moisture. It will dry out. And I'll show you in this one, I have dried oregano. You can go like this, brush your hands together, and it will emit the seeds. And you can also use some of the flower heads that are still on here as seasoning. So typically, uh, if you want to exclusively say, I only want the Rebecca, the Black Eyed Susan in this area, you put a little pot together, put a little soil in, put the seeds in, I have a seed starting video, which you probably have seen, and that's how you get that started. And you plant these seeds, they're very tender, but you plant them when all danger of frost has passed. Once they become perennialized, you don't have to worry about them anymore. They will stay outside for, for as long as you keep that area dedicated to them. What I tend to do is I will scatter all these together to make kind of a wildflower um, growing area, and that suits everybody just fine. The birds like it, and um, I have a friend who has honeybees on my land, and they love it. Remember, do not store them in plastic. You can pick them in plastic, but once you get back to the house, you need to take them out of your container. Like This is a very serviceable container for picking things in, and uh, take them out of the container, lay them on a flat surface to dry. Or if you have a bundle 
as with the anise or as I did with the oregano, you can hang it to dry. Uh, good warm space is uh, the second floor of a garage or in an attic space. Just be sure there's no critters to get after them and uh, you should be fine, ready for spring planting. That's it for now. Happy gardening. Mm -hmm.